conservation, while it can seem like a, a from, from the outside perhaps as a rather depressing subject, uh, nature is in general uh, in, in decline globally, uh, and in many cases that's, that's very, very, very severe, both for species uh, and for people. And that's extremely important. We have to convey that information. Uh, we'll talk about what's happening uh, in, in terms of tropical deforestation, about rates of loss around the world, what's, what's driving that. But we'll also go and look at, for instance, the Brazilian Amazon, where in the last uh, 10 years, deforestation rates have declined by 80%. Now, we don't hear about that in the news. It doesn't, it's, not, it's not sexy to hear about good news. And we'll start to understand, but we'll start to understand why that's happening, what that means in terms of the global climate, what it means in terms of uh, local people's uh, livelihoods, and so on. There are lots of places now around the world where things are getting better, not worse. And so we try very much to focus on those answers as well uh, because then we can learn from them so we can start to scale up uh, and because fundamentally people, the general public, uh, if you tell them there's a problem but you don't tell them there's a solution, how can you expect them to engage with, 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 with making uh, life better? So you have to engage people in positive stories. So beginning to understand those stories and celebrating them is really key to conservation's future and a key part of the ideas that we try to convey uh, to students coming through. I think teaching is absolutely fantastic. I, uh, I, I find it probably the best aspect of my entire job. I feel incredibly lucky to be able to uh, teach here in Cambridge. The topic I'm trying to, to talk about, conservation, how to save the planet's uh, natural heritage, how to save biodiversity for future generations, to me that's one of the most important challenges that humanity faces. Uh, and so with teaching that, you've got the chance to try and turn on really bright people who are going to do fantastic things with their lives uh, to get some of them to think about using that in their future career and that's that's an extraordinary uh, opportunity. We're very lucky with often teaching at the level of our uh, own, own research to be able to uh, stand up and explain that to people, very bright people for the first time. You really have to understand what you're talking about uh, and so that causes you, that forces a sort of sense of honesty uh, 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 about how well you understand things and, and very often I'll find I'm trying to explain something that I think I understand, uh, trying to sort out a lecture or trying to talk to students in a supervision and it becomes obvious that actually there's something you don't quite understand or they thought of something that you didn't think of before and that changes your grasp uh, of uh, even of something that you've thought about quite a lot beforehand so that that, that continual checking of your understanding of things that you get through teaching is a, is a great catalyst for your own research as well. He supervised me for a small part of my undergraduate course and getting to spend an hour going through a piece of work you're doing with a professor at the university I think that's a very fortunate thing to be able that Cambridge can offer that you can have small group contact time with people who are leading researchers in their field at kind of at the coal face of research and doing all of the things. I think Andrew was the one who first introduced me to the idea that economics and conservation weren't entirely separate disciplines yeah. and that very much influenced the choice of courses I took on my masters and my subsequent PhD is on behavioural yeah. economics essentially. And I think that's something that biologists don't get taught enough. And that I, yeah, I think it's really good Andrew brought that into the curriculum. We try and use a few different techniques in the way we teach. So inevitably, we give lectures to large classes of students, but we try and do other things. Well, I quite often tell stories. My second year course uh, is actually a load of stories. I mean, I talk through it, there's the science, there's the, the, the figures, there's statistics, but I try and tell it as a series of stories of what's happened to the planet in the past and what that tells us about what we're doing now. And then we talk about solutions. Uh, so we don't just give you the problems and leave you thinking it's all uh, going to hell in a handcart. We, we, we talk about what can be done and what is being done uh, by, by, by different people around the world. So uh, a really exciting proportion of our students now uh, go into careers in conservation. There are lots of other careers you can do with a, uh, a, a zoology degree, both within uh, zoology and science generally uh, and, and, in the, and in the general world of uh, of public service in the private sector but uh, one of the things we're trying to do is bring students into conservation careers uh, some of those will do uh, research careers like I've been lucky enough to pursue many of them will work in conservation NGOs agencies trying to change things uh, on the ground and in government agencies that's a very important uh, role and indeed in intergovernmental agencies so working in the, the big conventions around climate change and biodiversity and then at a uh, 
a really important group of them go into careers uh, where they're using their conservation skills, but they may be working uh, in other bits of government or in the private sector. The Royal Society has a, has a motto which I think serves for, for, for most uh, of the bright young minds I meet around here as well, which is nullius in verba, take no one's word for it. And the, the, the students that you get here time and again, they're like, they, they don't take your word for it. If you say something, they say, why? What about this? What about that? And what about this other idea I've just thought of? And they, that continuous questioning, which keeps us lively and on our toes, is what makes uh, teaching here and, and, and working with, with, with young students like that so fantastic. Dear world, yours.